Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Chat with Cat. Hope you're all having a good week so far. It's been a bit rainier and a bit colder this week, hasn't it? But I'm really hoping that the sun is going to come back soon. And talking of sun, it's nearly the summer holidays. Have you got anything planned? Now that we're allowed to go on holiday, are you going to go away anywhere? I don't really feel like I want to go anywhere busy. I've seen the pictures of the crowded beaches and it's made me feel a bit anxious. But I'd really like to go and see my family, so I'm hoping to do that in August. Um, I haven't seen my parents since the 1st of March, so it would be really nice to see them. Summer will bring some changes to what we do as a youth group too, and I'll be sending out some information about that in the next week or so, so keep a lookout for that. Now, if you haven't managed to get onto Zoom and take part in our youth groups this week, then I've got a bit of a recap for you so you're not missing out. This week on our Monday night Bible study, we started looking at the book of Isaiah. We spent some time thinking about the context of the book, thinking about who wrote it, who Isaiah was, and why it was written. We explored how God's people at that time were not living his way. In Isaiah chapter one, we're told that they'd turned their backs against God, they'd rebelled, they'd gone another way and were doing their own thing. They were sinful people. And the book of Isaiah speaks into that and it's God speaking to Isaiah, warning the people to make a change to how they live their life because he wasn't happy with how they were living. And sometimes I think that today's society reflects a little bit of God's people back then. We can all be selfish. We can all turn our backs on God. We can all think that we know better. We have our idols, things that we worship instead of God. When we return to God and we say sorry and we decide to go back to his way, he forgives us and the slate is wiped clean. He doesn't remember our mistakes. Because of Jesus dying for us, taking away our sin, we don't have to live under the sin and the guilt anymore. God sees us as righteous because he sees us through Jesus. And that's amazing. Meanwhile, on Thursdays, we've been continuing to look at the fruits of the spirit. And you can find a list of those in Galatians 5 verses 22 to 23. So far we've looked at love, joy, peace and then last Thursday Lindsay led a great session on patience. Do you see yourself as a patient person? I think sometimes I am patient and sometimes I'm really not. When I'm impatient it can be over little things like a web page not loading quick enough and I just think I'll oh, forget it. I'm not even going to bother waiting the extra few seconds for that. Other times I can be impatient about bigger things. Maybe I'm waiting for something to happen in my life or for something to change or for God to answer my prayer. And it's really hard to stay patient and trust in his timing. Has a lockdown tested your patience? It certainly tested mine at times. I think it's been hard not knowing when things were going to change and when things will go back to normal, when we'll be able to do things again. And that was especially hard right at the very beginning of lockdown when we just had no idea about when anything was gonna reopen or when life would go back to some kind of normality for us all. I want to share a great little Bible verse with you and you can find it in Romans 12 verse 12. And it's a great one to try and memorize or to write down and look at it throughout the day. So I'll read it to you now. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. We can be joyful because we have the hope of eternal life. We can be patient when troubles come because we have God strengthening us. And we can be faithful in prayer. Prayer does change things. And even though they may not be answered in the way that we think they should be, or in the time that we think they should be, God is still faithful and we need to keep persevering with prayer. So I encourage you to memorise that verse, write it out, put it somewhere where you're going to see it, because it's a great verse to live by. I really hope to see you on one of our Zoom calls soon. Don't forget that we have a Zoom call on Monday at 7, Thursday at 7 and Friday at 4. And then every other Sunday there is a vision call as well, which Alicia is organising.
But don't forget, things are going to be changing a bit over the summer and I will let you know what's going to be happening. Well, I really hope you have a great rest of the week. Bye.